these next few games. Uh, but he is getting better day, day by day. Uh, just don't know when he's going to come back. But my guess for sure he's out these next two. Um, I wanted to ask you about Garrison. I feel like uh, when you guys and, and other players talk about him a lot, it's so much like instinctual, like he's a great shooter. He, you know, has good court awareness, remembers to keep his feet in line. But I'm wondering what you've seen in terms of like purposeful work from him in the past couple of seasons, what he's really tried to improve on it and kind of what you've seen on, on that end. Well, I just, funny you say, I just spoke with him five minutes ago. I, I love his intensity. I love his uh, just his aggressive play, his toughness. Um, and I said, don't ever lose that. Don't ever lose that. But now you got to be able to turn it off in some of our switching coverages because he's so locked into a man. And then if we're in a switching coverage, he's so locked in and he's so physical and he's so aggressive that he doesn't turn the switch off of that and then get them to our switch action. But that's the next step of his growth is keep that in the right place, but be able to use the mental part of, of, of his game. And I think he's going to be, I like guys that have that first part because you don't have to worry about that with him. There's when you, you have trouble with guys when you have to turn that switch on. Um, but his, um, he works hard, man. That guy, that kid is a hard, one of the hardest working kids I've been around. And he's never, he's, he just keeps fighting. He keeps, he keeps making plays. And when the shot's not falling, he somehow gets to the free throw line. Uh, he's earned these opportunities to play. And I don't look at him as a, as a, I know he is a, he is a two way player. And I know that I'm not, um, saying that he's not, but I look at, he's an NBA player. And, uh, and I look at all of our two-way guys. Cash is the same way. These guys are all NBA players. Uh, it's just part of their journey is to take the next step to be on a you know 15-man roster. But he's working his way, going in that right direction because of his toughness and his hard work. But he deserves all the credit. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Chase. Hey Scott, with with Neto, um, was that a matter of him kind of taking one for the team, playing those games while being injured? Where you know, if you maybe had more players available, you would have been a little bit more cautious with his injury. Did he have to play through something that maybe he otherwise wouldn't have? Well, I mean, that's that's always looking back now. He would probably probably say that, but he was feeling pretty good. Otherwise, I don't think we would have put him out there. I know he's one thing I know about Neto. I've been around him now for a few months. That he's he is a he's an ultimate team player. He's a great teammate. Uh, he's uh, all the coaches love him because he just gives you everything he has. And, and you know, coming back from that injury, there's always there's always a chance for to re aggravate it or, or something else pops up. But um, the 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 risk was um, small. Unfortunately, that that it happened. Uh, and the good thing about it is not once we get past it, it's not going to, you know, not, not, it was nothing serious. Like I said, he might be back in you know, the next you know, few games or so. Um, but I don't think, I, I mean, I don't, our, our team, our, team, our performance staff, myself, talking to uh, Hau, that he was ready to go when we, we put him out there. And you've talked about how Russ sees his opponents as enemies and how you like that about him. Um, some players he's had more detailed histories with than others. Damian Lillard is one of them. What's it like as a coach going into a game where you know that Russ might have a little bit more than he already brings? Um, I mean, I know they're, they're two high, high elite basketball players. And they're, they've been great, great for their teams throughout the years. Uh, and, and Damian really to see his growth and where, you know, where he went to college and where he was drafted and, and to be one of the all pros in the league. And Russell's the same way, uh, really developed into a uh, MVP player. Uh, I know they, they have history, but <laughs> I've been around Russell enough. Uh, I don't, he has history with everybody. 
because uh, you, you know when you play him, you're going to be – you better be ready to play. He's going to bring a physicality. He's going to bring a mental edge. And, and Damian does the same thing. He just doesn't – he does it in a quiet uh, way. But he puts a lot of stress and a lot of uh, mental anguish on his opponents and the, the other team's coaching because he, he – I mean, you look what he's doing right now. He's making – He's making 35, 30 to 35 footers, like it seems like a layups. Um, and it's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a hard thing to guard, but I'm sure they're both are gonna compete against each other. And that's good, well, you, want, you, want two, you want two of the, the best players on, the, uh, on teams to compete. You know, we're, not, we're not here to make friends and they're not either. Jeff Zogut. Hey, Scott. Uh, I know last night uh, there was a lot going on uh, and so much focus was on your comeback, but I wanted to know what you thought of Kevin Durant and his ability to come back from what used to be a very difficult injury and what you saw in his game last night. Well, how you doing, Jeff? I'm well, Scott. I hope you're good. Um, one thing I, I did notice when I look at him the last game and then this game that he did a lot of work to get where he is now because that injury is hard to come back on. And I've seen, you know, firsthand uh, with John, all the work that he's put into it. And I know with, with Kevin is the same way, but I knew he would. That guy, he's a, he's a, and I don't use this term all the time. He's a hooper, man. That guy wants the ball. He wants the ball every, every game and practice. He's a practice guy. Uh, so I knew, I knew he was going to, he was going to come back. And he has a skill set, and it has a body that he he can play till he's in his early forties if he wants to do that. And he's basically six foot six ten, six eleven, long arm, handles the ball like a guard, shoots the ball like you know they, they all, all the all time great shooters. But it's great to see him back, and he's playing. He's playing. He's definitely playing like a he's in the MVP um, class right now. Fred. Hey, Scott, uh, just getting back to Ava's question about Garrison. Um, what, what changed for you from the beginning of the season when he's kind of out of the rotation for the first however many games to now he's closing close games against really good teams? I mean, what did your perspective change? Did, did you realize something about him? What, what's the difference there in his evolution throughout the rotation? Well, I, I think you, you you give everybody a chance to to step up, and and he has. And like I said, I don't I don't look at him as a as a as a two way player. I know that he has, and there's only certain games that a limit of games that he can play, and you know we have to make you know decisions maybe eventually, but you never know how that all works out. Uh, but sometimes when you have when you have injuries. Uh, guys that put the work in uh, that are preparing are the ones that have success. The guys that are down and bitter and, you know, woe is me, they're going to get that opportunity and they're going to wish they didn't have that opportunity because they're not going to do well. But with Garrison, you know that he, he does the work, he puts it in, and you knew, you know, with, any, with most NBA seasons, there's going to be a time that you're going to need all players. But this obviously, this season has been incredibly unique. And he stepped up and, and has played. He's played his way into some good minutes. Now, is it is it every night? Um, that still remains to be seen. You still gotta you still gotta produce. Now he's earned the minutes with his work and his and his his play. But you still, if you want to keep him, you've got to keep producing. We got guys that are potentially could be those, those minutes could be theirs as well. Zach Akuma. Hey coach, um, I didn't get to ask you yesterday, but what did you think of Rui's performance, uh, especially down the stretch yesterday? I think, his, I think his conditioning is still, is a little behind, but I, I, like, the, I like his finishing down, down the stretch. He made a, obviously a huge shot, a big three, um, but like, I, you, you, you keep going back to it, what, what all of all those guys have been through, and then to come back and play 
a competitive NBA game, it's hard and it takes, it takes, it might take him a few more games to get, get his legs and win and conditioning and feel and just the, just the movement of playing with uh, nine other guys on the floor. But I, I see it trending in the right direction. Like, like I said many times, he's a hard worker that, I'm gonna, we're going to be patient with him, but I thought I saw uh, I saw gains that he made from game to game, from the first game, Atlanta to the last game, and hopefully we see another jump um, um, against um, Portland. I think you said something on the court uh, after he contested Luau Cabrera's shot. Um, do you remember that? I mean, it looked like you were consoling him. No, I mean, I, he, I put him in a tough position because I knew that what they wanted to get. They wanted to Throw the ball. I mean, KD is such a uh, a big target, and I know put try to put some pressure on the ball. And Russell was putting pressure, so I want to make sure that they knew Brad was behind. And so Rui's gonna. I was trying to, you know, with with on the fly, trying to tell Rui that you're gonna have to guard two for a second. And he turned his eye just a just a, a slight, and the guy did made a good move and. He missed a he missed a, a, a bunny, but it was it was good. I mean, we we deserve. I basically say, man, we we escaped that one, Rui. I said, but we deserve we deserve some uh, a break to go our way. And I thought we had that last night with the steal, a big shot, and a big miss on their part. Thank you, Scott. Scott. Hey, Scott. Um... You know, you've had some time to kind of digest last night's game. And from my perspective, it seems like the team played a, with a lot more urgency, a lot more energy last night. I guess the, the challenge now is to build on that. And, and what's the message you want to give to your guys today, tomorrow, and, and how you build that kind of con consistent framework going forward? Well, we had a practice a few days ago, and I thought that that paid some dividends off. I mean, we were – we were scrambling all over the place. That's a high level offensive team. They scored 140 points uh, last night. They scored 140 points the night before in, uh, against OKC. But, um, but I wanted them to come back and, you know, we can't relax. We're, we're four and 12. Uh, we won one game. It was a big win. There's no question about that, but we still wanted to come back and have a second practice in a row. And we did. You know, chances are to have any more practices uh, like we had the last two, and including today, is probably going to be slim because we got 16 games in 29 or 28 nights. Um, but I, I love the guys. They came back and they gave us a good 45 minutes of work. Uh, and it was a physical practice. It wasn't a long practice, but we got good work in. Some guys sat out that played a lot of minutes last night. Um, as you can imagine, the, the guys that who did that. But a lot of other guys needed some run because when they when they get called upon, I want them to be ready and be be in the proper shape. All right, we'll finish up with Neil. Hey Scott, Russell was describing playing through his quad injury as almost just playing on one leg. I'm curious, how why was the decision not made to rest him earlier? Whether that be as soon as it happened in training camp or earlier in the regular season, he even played in that Boston game after you know it got re-aggravated in Philly. What's the decision process there? Yeah, but that, that's the thing that really, that like been in the league for 30 years, I know how hard it is to, to compete and to play, but it just pisses me off when a guy can say he's just playing on one leg and he's nearly averaging a triple-double. It makes me sick. I know how hard that is. I played with you know, no injuries and two good legs and couldn't even produce a, a triple single. Um, but, with, but with Russell, I think with, with him, he knows his body better than anyone. And when he heard it in training camp, he, we took a lot of time off and he did a few things and then he still fought through it. And then he got, then he, and he banged it again. And then we took, he didn't, he didn't practice hardly at all. I mean, if he did, it was, 10 minutes of here, just stretching, warming up, and, and then backing out on all the contact and all the stuff that we did live. Um, and then he started feeling better again. Not great, but those are, those are, that was, that's the injury, in, injury. You can work through it. And he knows it is better than anyone in our performance team. And then, and then I think after the third time, we just, he just said, we just said, and the staff just said, okay, we gotta, we gotta do what we need to do. And, 
and they made that decision. The good thing about it, it was early in the season. We, we took care of it. I mean, hindsight, yeah, we probably should have did it, but he, he was, but he was feeling good. And then it like, seems like every third game, he got a hit again. And he was wearing, you know, stuff to protect it. But um, I'm just feel, I just feel that it's behind us. The last three games, I, I see him attacking like he's, that I know that he can, and that's going to help us be better offensively. Puts so much pressure on the defense when he does that. And, and it puts pressure on the referees because now he, they have to make some tough decisions either. You know, he draws a lot of, he draws a lot of, you know, force towards that basket. Hey, Ish, welcome back. Um, we've seen a lot of guys come out of protocol and, and kind of not look like themselves or, or take a little time to get back to who they are. And you just hit the ground running. Uh, what was the key to doing that for you to kind of come back like you never left? Our training staff did uh, such a great job of uh, getting all of us back. Uh, Mo looked good. Um, everybody that was out, Rui looked good. Like, we're, we're kind of catching our rhythm and getting back into a flow. But our training staff did such a great job when the guys was on the road trip of getting us back into form, getting us back into shape. And uh, so, uh, and it's, it's a blessing. I can't, you know, thank the Lord enough. You, you know, you come back from situations like that. Some people have, you know, certain situations, you never take some of that stuff for granted. And so I'm truly, truly blessed that we all were able to, uh, you know, come back and be 100%. And those who are battling with those different things uh, with it, my prayers go out to you for a full, you know, a speedy recovery. But, uh, you know, I 100%, you know, credit to the trainers. And what did you do when you, you know, had to stay away from the team for as long as you did and, and you know, trying to stay sane and stay in shape? You know, I could uh, Netflix and chill by myself. Uh, but honestly, um, I just kind of just relaxed and chilled and, and you know, I did what we had to do, uh, you know, follow protocol. Uh, I'm okay with, you know, being in the house and, and, and following the instructions and uh, that's what I did. Ava. Hey, Ish, nice to see you back. Um, wondering how you kind of put this win last night in your mind. It seems like it was a really big shot of confidence that everybody kind of needed to see and, and really enjoyed getting the win. But obviously, you've got a really tough February ahead. So what's where's your mindset at? And one game at a time. Uh, that was a good win. Um, you know, that's a really good team, really good offensive team. A uh, really good one-on-one -on -one team, um, and we just kind of kept coming, kept coming, and uh, um, and that's a tribute to coach. It's a tribute to our, uh, to the guys. We just kept fighting, kept fighting, and that's what we have to be. Um, it felt good to pull out one of those wins. You know, we lost a game like that in Boston, lost a game like that in Philly twice. Uh, so to to close those ga that game out, it does give you confidence. But you know how it is in the NBA. Next game. And, um, you know, we do have a tough road ahead, but that's that's a good thing because we're behind the eight ball uh, when it comes to wins and losses. And so we have to, uh, uh, it's, we could look at it, you know, glass half full, glass half empty. I'm a glass half full type of dude. So uh, I look at it as a great opportunity to, you know, catch up in the standings. And last night, so when, when Scott's, he takes, I think, three timeouts in the first quarter, you guys are down 18, sends you and Mo in with the second unit. What's going through your mind at that point? Oh, y'all know me. I'll just be like, come on, man, let's go. <laughs> and we came back in Philly. We came back in Boston. Uh, you know, that seems to be, um, you know, that, that, that's, you know, you just come, I mean, come in and you just, try to get things going, try to play great defense, try to get the tempo going and get guys' spirits up. Um, con you know, continue to build confidence and know it's a long game. And uh, you kind of don't overthink it or underthink it, you just kind of play. And before you knew it, it was a tie game. We were like, oh, okay, we're in this game now, let's battle. So uh, that's my mindset. If I'm gonna be honest with you, I just come in and just be like, let's just go hoop. <laughs> Fred. Hey, Ish. Uh I'm curious because you and Garrison have had kind of, you guys have similarities in the ways that you came into the league, both undrafted and kind of had to fight for roster spots. And uh, I'm curious, what do you think has helped get, make Garrison successful and help him mentor an NBA rotation after kind of having that same kind of start? Garrison got a better start than me. 
I was already traded by now. Uh, but uh, uh, but honestly, uh, Garrison has a skill, an unbelievable NBA skill, an elite NBA skill, uh, and that's his ability to shoot. The second thing that's underrated about Garrison is his toughness. Uh, his defensive toughness, his offensive toughness. Garrison to get a little nasty and, and, and get a little uh, in some guys defensively. And coach loves that. We love it. Uh, again, like he has some big shots down the stretch defensively. Um, you know, him getting that steal, setting up that three for Russ. Uh, G has been playing well and he, and he played well last year. Let's don't get it twisted. Like he played really well last year uh, in the time and the minutes he played. Uh, so G's been playing well since he hit the floor in the NBA. And uh, he's just going to continue to get better and better. Um, but he, he's he got an elite skill. And uh, my cousin always tells me, like, when he's looking at guys and he's evaluating, like, kids, he's like, who has an elite skill that separates himself from everybody else? And G has that with his ability to shoot. And like I said, the underrated part about his game is his defensive toughness, his rebounding. And like I said, he ain't scared of nobody. Neil? Hey, Ish, uh, happy to see you guys back and healthy. Um, when you're playing with Russell, you know, obviously two point guards on the floor, but only one ball. What's the best way and what's the most efficient way for you guys to be successful? Be aggressive. Uh, I remember when I first got out there with Russ, I was trying to figure it out. And Russ, he was just like, Ish, all right, man, we've been playing this game too long. Just be aggressive. Um, and that's what I tried to do last night. And that's what I tried to do, you know, before the protocol hit, just be aggressive. Like if whoever got the mismatch, whoever has the advantage, we have a speed advantage every night on the floor. You got two guys that are arguably two of the fastest guys in the NBA. So when you have that advantage, um, we got to take advantage of that with our speed, with our ability to get to the paint. Um, and, and so last night and, and continuing on for myself, you don't overthink, you don't underthink it, you just hope. And and so that's an advantage for us. Uh, and that's something that we have to continue to build on. Besides just pushing the ball, you know, in transition or whatever it is, what, what are other examples of being aggressive? Oh man, it could be back cutting. It could be having a mismatch. Like let's say Russ got somebody on the post, finding that. Let's say I have an advantage with a guard that can't guard me. Then I have to be aggressive either to score or to get in the paint finding shooters, uh, just playing, just hooping. Um, and obviously, like I said, outside of the speed, but when you get a mismatch in a pick and roll or you get a mismatch with a guy that you feel like you can take, you gotta be event, you gotta be aggressive. Um, you, you know, I had a great coach in Skip Prosser tell me, you know, criticize success, you analyze it. And so when I look at Brooklyn and how they do things, they see an advantage in Kyrie and KD, try to get a switch and then you be aggressive in that way. And I thought last night, and continue to move forward. That's something that we could, you know, kind of try to steal from that book. Uh, it's something we did a good job of last night. Well, first of all, what was last night like for you, you know, getting the opportunity and taking advantage of it? I mean, that's, yeah, it's kind of what it was like. It was, I mean, it's obviously fun um, to play basketball. And um, honestly, we've been three, three and 12 for a minute. So we've been sitting on three wins for a long time. So getting that win obviously um, made it pretty special. And last night, um, you know, you had a few steals and, and jumped the passing lane on the perimeter and, and took it all the way. And you know, I feel like we don't often see players your size do that. Um, how have you kind of developed that in your game? And, and how do you gauge the, the gamble that is, you know, trying to jump a passing lane? Honestly, it's just uh, all energy. Um, it's not really calculated, which might be the problem sometimes. And that's kind of on me to find the right balance because playing hard is good, but you also at the same time got to play smart. And that's something I've been trying to mon monitor my entire career. So that's still work in progress. And um, yeah, it's a learning experience every game. Fred. Hey Mo, uh, aside from the obvious stuff of just the stuff that everybody in the world is dealing with. Is it harder to navigate this season just with the limited practice and the, the weirder lifestyle and all of that? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say it's hard. Like, 
I always put it in perspective and it's like one of these situations where you can make a decision for you as a human being and either tell everybody that how hard it is and tell yourself how hard it is or just figure out how to deal with it and kind of embrace that adversity and kind of get better through it as a human being, you know? And um, I'll tell you what's hard, that's losing. So I don't care about all the other stuff. Um, that's kind of what I'm, I'm, I'm worried about. That's the only thing. Neil. Hey Mo, happy to see you guys back healthy. Um, Scott was talking about the camaraderie that you guys have with the center group, Robin, you, Alex, um, and that you guys are all cheering for each other. Um, what is that like and how has Robin been able to help you in your development? I mean, this guy has been in the league for multiple generations, it feels like. So um, the, the players he's played against and with, for me as a, as a young gun, is unbelievable. When he talks, I'll listen, you know, like, and he's hilarious. And that's fun to be around. Alex, I've known for two days now, but um, he's a great guy. We're getting along really well. We have that European big center condition, the connection. So he's a good dude. Both went to college to know how it is to go to college from, from overseas. So, um, I mean, dude, we're like a team that it's supposed to be camarader camaraderie um, and we're so, supposed to be together. So, um, yeah. Ava. Hey, Mo, just wondering what the last um, couple weeks were like for you, obviously being away from the team and, and isolate, well, not this past week, but you know, before that in isolation, um, wondering what that was like for you mentally and how you kept yourself busy also. Hey, I'm not gonna lie, I highly recommend not come, becoming sick because it sucks. Um, I'll, I, the first week obviously is tough because you're sick and then you're kind of over it and you're trying to get out of your house. Um, I'm the type of guy that needs to move. So I literally in quarantine on my rooftop, running in circles like a crazy person for hours just to get some movement in. Um, it sucks, man. I mean, obviously you feel not guilty, but you feel weird too because all the games are postponed. So like nobody can play, you know? So like you don't feel responsible because it's not your fault, but you do. It's like na nature, like what, the, what, what is this? We've, we've done all the right things and now we're in this position. So. Um, but again, it's one of these things like first two days might suck and then it's adversity and you deal with it. It's a decision you got to make for yourself and whether to sulk or to kind of embrace it, you know. And how are you feeling physically after that period, then the ramp up and going at and playing like you did last night and then today? Like, does your body feel weird at all? Uh, no, I feel good. I, um, I don't feel like I was sick. So. I, 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 obviously, your body isn't prepared, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm privileged enough to be young and, and <laughs> youthful enough to, to get through this. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Thank you. Good. Thanks. Nice to see you back, Mo. Thank you. Chase. Yeah, Mo, last night after a few of your plays, it seemed like you were really fired up and, and Russell Westbrook was too, um, as you guys kind of embraced each other. Is a high energy player and um, what's it like playing with someone who brings as much energy as he does to the table? It holds you accountable because like you said, when you're an energy guy and you get drafted as one and you kind of in the NBA because of that, you, you got to bring that every day. and. When one of your best players does that on a nightly basis, and you as a bench player see that, you think, okay, I have to do that too. And it's crazy too, because you, you can tell how much he pulls the other teammates, you know? So it's automatic that you do the same thing and kind of try to, to go along with that. And obviously, honestly, it's like just a lot more fun. So I don't even care about the other stuff. Like I just, I just like being crazy like that. So it's, I enjoy it a lot more.